Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to everyone. Today, our topic is the planet Mars. So let's go into this because I have the feeling that there's so much to speak about it. Mm, even I, even if I want to speak a lot. <laughs> um, so I think that just to tell you, um, really enjoy a lot writing this post today because I discovered so many things that I had no idea um, about Mars and also um, was really, I, I, like I discovered many things about the meaning of this planet that I didn't expect it to. So as always, we will start with the of this of the name of this planet trying to understand why it was so important for the people um, in the past what it meant for them um, in order to name a planet with this name so um, before we start uh, I say uh to say this that <clears throat> um that sometimes uh speaking about the anger of this um, um uh, of this planet of mars um speaking about this the the, the planet the planet mars with with all this anger and so on um uh i must be sincere um with all of you that sometimes i feel like these teachers that i experienced in my classrooms when i was um younger um these teachers that i can understand those teachers that uh sometimes they are really really tired when they listen to someone asking a question that is out of the topic that that the teacher is saying uh or people that are talking and bothering the rest in the class and and this ones of those teachers that says shut up and they want to throw this on the face of the of the children um <clears throat> these moments i have them and i have to admit that um to be sincere uh saying that uh, it happens many times uh, even if you don't not <laughs> it happens many times um and um and um uh and i relate this with our uh, with my uh, of course with my own things that i didn't work in myself um but uh, as i as i um as i see uh, sometimes like those teachers in us that they lose their 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 patience um when they are teaching and so on um it happens to me too of course uh, many times and um and um but today talking about um mars and and all of these things i just realized really important for me that um that is that since i was six years old i always was imagining myself giving classes teaching in a school um to kids to teenagers um i always loved to be a teacher to be with a board and explaining things and so on um and um and even if i don't see your faces now we are not in a class um i must admit that i am really 
thankful to all of you because um, because I am that what I wished all my life, which was teaching, uh, which was um, explaining things to to people. So I really um, appreciate that you are here every day uh, listening to what I have to say because I really love teaching and um, and well, it's because of you that I'm doing this every day. So thank you. So of course that um, what bothers me in the class with, with the students is something that I have to an analyze why it affects me. But as a teacher, I have to say sometimes respect your, your partners. <laughs> And that's it. And with this, I'm not saying that I that it's bothering me. No, it's not bothering. It's, it's even it's funny. Okay, so I'm I'm not I'm not bothered by that. I'm just saying about this because other things that kind of disconcert me. Um, but uh, that's it. So Mars, the name of a of a god. But the name comes from the Etruscan uh, language in Italy and was Maris. And Maris comes from, in some, some, in some way, comes from Moris, which is to live in a place, a morade. It's live in a place. Why the god, the god of war, Mars, is related to live in a place. So now let's go into the origin of humanity to understand why the god of war is named to live in one place. This began when the humans were not. This means that they were traveling all around the territory and they were eating things and um, eating things and grabbing things and then they left. So they were leaving every place and they were just eating, drinking and taking what they needed and they just go away, okay? So nothing really belonged to them because they were just taking what they needed. Mm -hmm. But there was a moment when they discover agriculture that they started to use the land for their own purposes all the time. So they kind of said, okay, I will um, 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 so I will um, so what they said was um, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Um, what they said, this land belongs to me now. This land is something that um, that is for my own. I built a house. I live here now, so the house is mine. The land is mine. The production is mine. So they start to settle. That's the settlement. When they become set sedentary, they settle down in one place, and they sat on that land. They took power on that land. So when you took power on a place where you are seated, where you are settled, that's what we call possession. Possession comes from the Latin word potis, that means power, and sedere, that means to seat, to settle. So when you settle in a place where you put your power, where you take power of the place where you are settled, it's possession. So they started to understand the concept of possession, to have things. Remember that uh, when we spoke the, the, in the other days for other planets, we described that every um, we described that every uh, god was basically. Um, a conception, a concept of something. So they took all ideas together and they 
they created a concept that that holds all the ideas. So in this case, the the agricultures, the people that has the land that was growing the plants, had its own spirit that hold all of them. Okay, the agricultures, and that was the god of agriculture. The god of agriculture was the one in care of the lands, was the one helping for the plants to grow so the people could have things, could survive, could eat. <coughs> was Maris for the Italian people. Maris is the um, um, Maris is the god, the idea that hold on it all the agriculture people, the sedentary people. That when you are in one place, you are settled in one only place. That's all the things that you have. So what they needed was to protect the only things that they had from other people that could come and invade them to take food, to take their ass. So what they did was to put all the agricultures, uh, agricultures together and they created like a communion, community, sorry, like a, a community that um, that they uh, and they created like um, an army to protect those lands. So the same god of agriculture was the same god protecting the lands of agriculture that were producing food. Hmm? This is the way in which the same god of agriculture is becomes also the god of protection. Remember that for the past, the gods were not saying that, um, that we're outside creating things. For the, for the ancient ones, a god was kind of like a flag for a day. It was a symbol that unified many people that thought, that thought the same. Okay? So it's not about a being that was there, like we believe today about a god. So what they did, saying that this concept unified the spirit and the souls of many people, was that everyone that was honoring the same god, Maris, for example, like a flag, they all were working for the same thing, protecting the same thing. Okay? So remember then that the gods were not beings, were concepts that unified people. In the very beginning, there's no way to connect people like with flags, with nations, with these kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so they needed to uh, unify the spirit in one concept. Okay, so the gods were like the kind of um, of symbolism that unified the the um, uh, the people in that time. Mm -hmm. So in that time, remember that the sedentary people that were settling in place, they needed to protect their things from the nomads people because there were so many nomads around also traveling through the planet that they were, remember, the nomads were hunters and recollectors. So they just went through the lands and robbed everything that they could so they could eat, they could keep going. Okay, so because of this, they needed to protect themselves, okay, because of the nomads that were robbing, stealing things they went through. Mm -hmm. So later comes the Romans. The Romans were not exactly from Italy. The Romans came from the Greek islands and Turkey. So they went to Italy and they started to mix with the country that was in that region, region that was Etruria. So in that territory, they create a new culture. And this new culture, the Roman culture, they from the Etrurian people and made it into a new one. So Maris was called Martius. And Martius, Martius is how we get this name of today. Mart, Mars, Marte. So Mars is the god of agriculture. Is the god that protects.
So the Roman, the Romans, they a civilization. So they started to grow. The population started to grow. So they needed more lands. <clears throat> so they needed to conquer much more territory. Um, so they used this uh, symbol of the agriculture god to conquer new lands. And that's how the god of agriculture turned into the god of war, the one that protected, the one that invaded the territory. So for the Romans, Mars was this protector, which is totally different from what the Greek people used to think about the god of war, which was Ares. Ares means disgrace. So it's very different. So the Greek people, they they wouldn't think they, they they wouldn't think that Ares is the best one to call if you have to go to a war. For the Romans, Mars was the protector of the empire. The Greek ones was a destroyer, so nobody wanted him because it was terrible. So they would rather act to miss they would rather ask to Atenea uh, for guidance in a war than him because he was a disgrace. Whoever called him, everyone would die, everyone would be killed. Terrible. Blood all around. So because of this God would be so terrible, all covered in blood, they call this star moving in the skies as Ares because that planet was red. And it's not because they could see the planet, but because they could see the red light. If you go out and you um, and you see the, the, the planet, um, and you watch Mars, you will see that the light is red of that planet. It's not white like the other ones. So, <clears throat> That's why they would think, um, so if that moving star is a god, and it's red, for sure is Ares covered on the blood of the enemies. So for the Greek people, this planet was terrible, represented all the disgraces of a war. But that vision of chaos was from the Greek people. For the Romans, when they say Mars was not a terrible being representing just the war, Mars was representing the honor of the war, was representing the will, the strength, the one that protects, that is taking care of the lands, of the fields, of the agriculture, of the countries, the one that helped the country to be. So these are the two different perspectives of the same planet. Mars is related with the strength of life, the ability to manifest the things, to have the will of action, the one that says, I can do this, this is my place, I can move forward. So for us, this planet is the one that represents the vital is the kundalini that pushes forward the energy of mars is representing the physical body and the manifestation taking action so happen when this fire is unbalanced that we start to have chaos destruction war anger when I am in balance, Mars represents action. And will. So if I am in balance, Mars will represent the action and will. But if I am unbalanced, 
it will represent reaction and violence. We can relate this to Mars and this to Aries. Hmm? So usually our humanity is ruled by reaction and violence because we are unbalanced. And this means that we're not being able to take action by ourselves and to have the will to do the things by ourselves. So because we have been ruled by others through thousands of years, we have relayed our inner power to the action of others. We don't act unless others tell us what to do. And we don't have the will to do our stuff unless someone is telling us how to do it. So because we don't have that inner power, we put that power outside with power to others. And because of this, I am constantly waiting for something to happen outside in order to know what to do. And that's what we call expectation. Without power, we live from expectations. So what do we do when we expect? We sit waiting for something to happen, giving the power to others. And this is what we call possession. To sit and wait for the power. Possession. So what is this process doing with us? That we believe that things gives us power. So this little person here with power says, in order to have more power, I need to invade to have more things and to control us. So that person will look for control as a way to establish its power. So in order to have control, I need to put myself over the others to control the power of others. And the way I do it is with violence. And when someone attacks my inner power to take over my power, what do I do to defend my power? I react. And this is what happens to all of us that makes us live in this wheel of violence, reaction, violence, reaction, and we don't know how to go out from here. All because we were expected to have the power over us. Hmm? All because instead of acting myself in order to accomplish my missions, my goals, in, instead of activating my will, I wait for others to do it for me. So that's I lose my inner power, waiting, expecting for having things to give my power. Hmm? So Mars, remember, now we go here. Mars is not the one that says, go to war. Mars is that says, if you want something, you have to work for it. So, and you will harvest. So, in your action, and you will harvest the will. And now to understand why we have to take this action, we have to go to the very basic topic we always have been about, which is survival. If we want to survive, we need to do something. And this is our biology, it's not psychologically. It's our biology. Our body was designed our body was designed to survive, to do stuff, to survive. Okay. That's the goal of our body. So we need to act in order to survive. This 
constant need of survival is the one that activates the action and the will. When we created a society, a civilization for the first time, I relay my power to someone, to someone to do it for me. So I lose my action and my will, expecting for someone to give me what I need, the possession. And now, suddenly, I think that this possession is mine. So I have control over this possession. And when someone comes and says, this is not yours, give it to me, comes the violence, which brings the reaction. What is the power? The power is the sensation of having the control of your own life. The sensation of having the control of your own life, when in reality, we are all going to die. You will die. And this is what happens when I say you will die. So when I say you will, you will die, usually Phobos and Deimos. Phobos and Deimos are the two tiny satellites that has the planet of Mars. Phobos is the origin of the word phobia, which means fear. And Deimos means panic. So Phobos and Deimos, Fear and panic are the basis, the reactions that our body has when it faces death. Because when they when the body is dead, it says, I need to fight in order to live. I need to fight against hunger. I need to fight against death. I need to fight against uh, um, insomnia. I need to fight against um, um, not being able to breathe. I have to fight in order to reproduce. Everything is a war, a fight in our lives because of the fear and the panic for this life to end. The fear of losing control of life. This begins in the physical body. It is translated, transmitted to the emotional body and then translated in the mental body. So now you see this, that all the people that is willing to control the life of others they do this because of the fear and the panic that produce the possibility of losing the control over only things that that person was able to get, to achieve. This means that the war, the fight, they didn't exist by itself as a concept alone. They exist only because of fear and panic. It doesn't exist the evil. Evil, it's the only reason why evil exists is because of fear and panic of not fine. So the only way we can reach Mars is if we go through fear and panic. And if we leave the darkness of Ares behind, we don't fear the conflict, the war of Ares, the chaos. And we go through the fear and through the panic and we will find Mars. And what Mars, God of War, is agriculture. Is the one that says, Patient. The ones you have to wait, you have to understand the process, you have to sow the seeds. Is the one that gives you the inner power 
to say I can. Mars is the inner power, is the will of action. So <clears throat> in order to be able to transcend fear and panic, we have to remember these two concepts, limits and illimited. So <clears throat> if you say we are illimited beings, you are not here, you are limited. This is no matter what you do, you will find limits everywhere. Everywhere, everything has limitations. Limit. Where do we have conflicts in our lives? The conflict lives, the wars, the invasions comes from the people that think that they are illimited in a that is limited, that they don't respect the limits, so they go over the limits of others. The idea of being illimited. without any limits. In a body that is limited, makes you a being, an invasive, invasive being that goes over the others. So look at this. When an unlimited, unlimited being says by awareness, mind is unlimited, I can do anything I want, it's saying that is afraid of the biggest limit, which is death. I will die. So an unlimited being is afraid of death because it wants to go over the limits. So in the same way as a limited being, the unlimited being is trying to escape death. The limits were created by the mind, a limited mind, in order to be able to exist. Essentially, the limits doesn't exist in the universe. But the limits were created by the unlimited, unlimited mind in order to be able to experience itself. Otherwise, it cannot. Death, therefore, is a tool of the unlimited mind. And you may say, Life doesn't exist. Death doesn't exist. Yes, doesn't exist. That's why the limited and the unlimited is called transformation. The limited one is attached to the things because to life because it thinks that is the only thing that it can get, that it has. And the unlimited attached to the idea because it, it thinks that is the only thing it has. Both of them, the one that is based on the forms and the one that is based on the ideas are limited and attached by fear and panic of losing control of its shape and idea. The only way in which the limited and the unlimited can live in harmony through transformation if, if both live behind the fear and the panic of losing control. Everything in the world is transformation. So I have to allow myself to transform. The body I am in will die, will transform in another body. And the idea that I have of this will also change. So I have to let my ideas die too. Okay? So what's the key of Mars after all this explanation? What is the key of Mars? Mars is patience. Patience. Mars is will. Mars is will. 
Mars is transformation. And if I don't have patience, if I don't have will, and if I don't allow myself to transform, I become Eris.